Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit happened in running this week. This week's stories include Killian breaks a leg, Mike Foote sets the 24 hour vertical ski record, and five of what were found on the Barkley Marathon's course. We begin this week with a really shitty bill co sponsored by Justin Price and Arthur Handy to effectively ban outhouses in the entire state of Rhode Island. Representative Price, whom I will now refer to as Outhouse Guy, since he specifically said he didn't want to be called Outhouse Guy, declared that they have an outhouse problem and proposes by January 1st, 2019, that all outhouses be abandoned, filled up, and destroyed by the end of the year. All right, just lit it up. Earl did the, did the uh, honors, and uh, there goes the outhouse. She's going up. There's all our guests ready for a fine show. As the official news anchor of Mountain Outhouse News, I hereby condemn this bill and any actions by Outhouse Guy to remove outhouses in Rhode Island or anywhere else. I thank you for allowing me this rant and hope you share my appreciation for a good old outhouse. The U.S. trail team was just announced for the 2018 Trail World Champs to be held in Penagolosa, Spain. Yeah, I bet I butchered that one. The six-man and six-woman team is chosen by USA Track and Field's MUT, or Mountain Ultra Trail Council. They will race a 50-mile point-to-point event against some of the best trail runners in the world, coming up soon. So is this also technically the World Ultra Championships? Just curious. Here's the team in no particular order. Tim Frerichs of Flagstaff earned his spot from his win at the TNF 50 San Fran this past year. Mario Mendoza of Bend, Oregon was the top American finisher at last year's World Championships, as well as USATF Trail Marathon and 100K Trail Champs. Tim Tollefson is again on the squad with his third place finish at UTMB and win last year at Ultra Trail Australia. Damn, this is a star-studded team. We've also got Zach Miller, who placed second at the TNF 50 that Ferricks won. Olin Berger qualified after his win at the White River 50 mile near his hometown of Seattle, Washington. Finally, from the Beast Coast of Manlius, New York, is Chris Rauli, who won last year's 50 mile trail champs at Cayuga Trails 50. So long story short, if you wanna be on the team, impress the USATF council by winning a USATF trail championship at the ultra distance of your choosing. For the ladies, Danny Filipek of Rochester Hills, Michigan, and a swap athlete also won the 50 mile trail champs last year. Claire Gallagher of Inglewood, Colorado is on the team selected after her win at the 2017 TNF 50 San Fran. Amy Leadham of Larkspur, California, who plays second at the Flagstaff Sky Race 55K, joins the team along with Caitlin Gerben from the Pacific Northwest with her fourth at last year's Western States and win at the Cascade Crest 100. Sabrina Little of Robinson, Texas won the 100 mile USATF National Champs at Rocky Raccoon and was second behind Danny at the 50 mile championships. Sarah Pizzo of Lakewood, Colorado was third at the Red Hot 55K and also won the Backcountry Rise 50K. Make us proud team and bring home the golds. I love gold. Don't know why I did that. Next up this week, the Leadville 100 announced a new shoe and apparel sponsor for 2018 and beyond. They've apparently followed suit with Anton and dropped New Balance in favor of La Sportiva. If you think I'm kidding, they even specifically mention Anton by name in their press release as a major factor in their continued involvement in the Leadville Race Series. They will not only sponsor the 100 mile run, but all of the other running events in Leadville that Lifetime will organize in 2018. We have a new vertical 24 hour record on skis thanks to Mike Foote. He skied up and down a 1,020 foot run at Whitefish Mountain Resort in Montana 60 times in 24 hours complete 61,200 feet of climb in 77 miles. Huge congrats, Mike. What an amazing accomplishment. Now, I need to know, what's the 24 hour vertical record on foot? Does anyone know? Cause I'd like to take a stab at that one. Dakota Jones has been quiet on the racing front for much of the last year, following his second place finish at the Lake Sonoma 50 mile due to some lingering injuries, but he's currently trading the running shoes for a bike pack. I think that's right. He's biking his way from Durango to San Francisco on his bicycle with camping gear on board, taking the slow road and getting to know the West pretty intimately. 
You can follow him at that Dakota Jones on Instagram. Why San Fran? My guess is to meet up with fellow Sombra teammate and Transcon adventurer, Ricky Gates. Maybe some bromance going on? I don't know. There were a number of results from the trail in Ultraland this week, and even a number of Schemo races taking place. We won't go deep into those, but there is one ski-related piece of news we have to cover. More on that in a hot second. Let's first start with the most high-profile US race this weekend, the Chuck Nut 50K. Often a super competitive and fast race, this year did not disappoint as a number of speedy guys and gals lined up for Chrissy Mail's event this past weekend in Washington. Chrissy, of course, was fresh off her win at Mount Galagong and back in time to send the guys and gals off into the woods. Keely Henninger was your ladies champ in the 26th edition with a big win in four hours, seven minutes, a whole eight minutes up on second place, Anne Marie Madden, and 21 minutes ahead of third place, Gina Slaby. For the guys, it was Cole Watson out front running a smart race with a huge win in three hours, 36 minutes, followed by Pat Patrick Smythe in three hours, 40 minutes. The next five guys were all within four minutes of each other with Patio O'Leary third in 3.47, Laney fourth, and Ryan back in fifth. Shout out to the Chuckanut team for putting on what sounds like another great event. Camille Heron made some news this week with her bold statement that she was taking on the 24 hour world run record at this weekend's, and I'm going to butcher this name, so comment away below, the Lotzi 24 hour in Oklahoma. Camille charged hard, racking up over 60 miles in under eight hours and 75 miles in under 11 before stopping due to some possible kidney pain. She admitted herself to the hospital later that night and was being given fluids and care. Interesting thing was, despite not even making it halfway through the event time-wise, she almost won anyways. Top female was Jacqueline Long with 77 miles, and top male was Wyatt Hockmeyer with 88. The final stretch of the Piera Menta Ski Mountaineering race, after four days of racing, Killian Jornet, who was in the lead with teammate Jacob Herman, took a fall and broke his fibula. Ouch. Killian wasn't able to splint that one up enough to finish the race and ended up withdrawing to seek medical care. All the best, Killian. The LA Marathon took place this past weekend and we thought it was interesting reading some of the comments on Facebook. One by Galet German stated the course was actually 26.45 miles long and that all the mile markers were off by a quarter mile. She says her Garmin told her it was off the whole way and that she wants her official time updated. To this, multiple others chimed in saying things in affirmation of her comment like, mine clocked in at 26.45, my Garmin clocked 26.62 or 26.48 for me. Hmm, newsflash marathon runners, GPS watches aren't 100% accurate and many factors can affect the number including accuracy of how often it takes a point to buildings in the way or even the tangents you run during the race. So, chill. The course is certified to be no less than a marathon and that does use those pesky tangents. So if you aren't paying attention and just going with the flow of the crowd, you may indeed be a bit long. Plus, you just ran an ultra, congrats. And some other non-trail news, a couple of 100 plus year olds set records on the track this weekend at the USATF Masters Indoor Champs this past weekend. 102 year old Julia Hurricane Hawkins ran a 24.79 second in the 60 meter and Orville Rogers, age 100, also set a record of 19.13 seconds in the 60 meter as well. So damn cute. And our final story this week comes to us from Frozenhead State Park, where Ashley Blake and Joshua Scott found a litter of puppies on a training run in the infamous park where the Barkley Marathons are held. Some people, AKA Jam Jam, are saying the finding of the five puppies signifies the five loops required to finish the story Barkley race, held each year on Foles Weekend. Scott and Ashley rescued the pups and took them to a local shelter. Scott, of course, had to adopt one of the puppies and the new name, you guessed it, Barkley. We are continuing to expand where you can access your weekly outhouse news. We are excited to announce we're now on Spotify. Search Steep Life Media, where you can get your weekly dose of crazy shit. 
And with that, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time if you have crazy stories to share or a question or feedback for the show. As always, leave a comment below. And as always, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters who help keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and Jam Jam fed. Have a shit week.